interested. All right, Tom, beloved, thank you for carrying on. We come to our part two of this morning. We just had a, a brief pause together. Go back to verse 27, your verse 27, as for both kings, their hearts will be, uh, will be intent on evil and they will speak lies to each other at the same table, but it will not succeed for the end is still to come at the appointed time. Circle appointed time. So basically the appointed time here, it's for the end of the North and South War. The appointed time is for the end of the North and South War, and it had not yet come to an end right away. And let me make a statement that I forgot to make right now. After Antiochus left Egypt, after Antiochus IV, Epiphanes left Egypt, the two brothers established a joint rule. The two brothers are the Antiochus, six and eight, they make a joint rule, and Antiochus the Fourth Epiphanes never controlled Egypt in this campaign. Make a note of that. He never controlled Egypt in this campaign. Which campaign? The first one. Keep that in mind. The appointed time we just came across this, verse 28 of the account. Then he will return to his land with much plunder, but his heart will be sent, sent against the Holy Covenant and he will take action and then return to his own land. I need your attention here online and in class. He is returning to Syria, north. So where is my pointer? So basically, Antiochus IV is returning to Syria. So he was trying to conquer Egypt here in that place and now he's going back to Syria in this region here, a little bit lower than what you see here, and guess what? When you go from there to there, you pass through Israel. Make a note of that. But he failed to conquer, so he returns to Syria north. He got a great amount of spoil. He got spoil, was successful to a point, but he failed to conquer over all Egypt. And guess what? He was angry. He was angry because he failed to take Egypt. And when you are angry, who do you vent on? Israel. So his heart set against the Holy Covenant in verse 28. Once again, it's the theocracy of Israel. Verse 28. And his heart will be set against the Holy Covenant, and he will take action and then return to his own land. He returned to Syria, north, from the south, Egypt. And on his way to on his way back from south to north, he plundered Israel. And this is described. The, the, the plundering of Israel, make your, your notes, it is described in 1 Maccabees, the Roman Catholic Bible. I have it right here. I'm not going to read the passage. You can get the Bible. The Bible is called St. Joseph edition of the New American Bible, not the New American Standard. You find that plunder in 1 Maccabees chapter 1, verses 20 to 28. And you also find this in 2 Maccabees chapter 5, verses 11 to 17. These are good books. They're not canonical books, but they are good because they bear a valid historical information for these books here. A little bit like Flavius, Flavius Josephus. In verse 28c, he returned to his own land. It's Syria. But only after causing a great amount of suffering to the Jewish people in Israel. Listen to this. On his way back to Syria, he killed... 80,000 Jews. Women and children. He killed 80 
thousand Jews, women and children alike, and he took forty thousands as slaves. So that's why, once again, beloved online and in class, once again, a type of the Antichrist who will do way more damage than this. We have time to, to this morning to take the third campaign of Egypt. Look at your outline, the third Egyptian campaign from 29 to 30A. 29 and 30A, the first part, it reads in verse 29, at the appointed time, circle the appointed time, he will return and come into the south, circle the south, but this last time it will, it will not turn out the way it did before. Why? For the ships of Kittim, circle the, the, the ships of Kittim, will come against him. Circle against him slash forward. That's all I want for now. Daniel chapter 11 does not deal with the second campaign. It's not recorded. And the second campaign against Egypt was in 169 BC. The second one not recorded was in 169 BC. Here in verse 29, when I ask you to circle the south, this is in reference to the campaign number three, and this is in 168. BC. Makes sense as you subtract. I also ask you to circle the appointed time. In this case, it's the appointed time by the Almighty God. And he came this third time because of the agreement made with the two brothers to co rule. And he felt betrayed by Philometer. So that's why one was co-ruling in Egypt and uh, in Memphis, so Philometer 6 and Philometer 8. So he felt betrayed by them. But this time it will not work as well as the first. He will not be victorious. Who will not be victorious? This man right here, Antiochus IV Epiphanes. So that's why in verse 29 it says, at the appointed time by God, he will return and come into the south. South is down the map in Egypt. But this last time it will not turn out the way it did before. He will take less plunder and so on. Why? The reason is given in verse 30. The ships of Kittim. The ships of Kittim, it's a reference to Cyprus. C-Y-P-R-U-S. It's a reference to Cyprus, a territory west of Israel. These ships, a territory, the ships of Kittim, it's a reference to Cyprus. And these were Roman ships. Roman ships. They were Roman ships who came to Egypt from Cyprus. Makes sense. They came to Egypt from Cyprus. Listen closely based upon verse 30. Again, just the first part where it says from the ships of Kittim will come against him. When Antiochus IV Epiphanes came near Alexandria, Brandon, who is by the sea, right here. When Antiochus IV came near Alexandria, he was approached not by the Egyptians, but at this time by a Roman officer of one of the ship called Gaius. You can Google these guys, by the way. His name was Gaius Popilius. Gaius Popilius Lianus. He was approached by this man from Rome, one of the commander of the ship. 
He was not approached by anybody in Egypt at that point. He was approached direct from Gaius Papilius. If you have a son, I know that you will follow this very faithfully. <laughs> Gaius Papilius Lianus. And he, this man, Gaius, Gaius Papilius Lianus, he ordered Antiochus IV to leave Egypt. He said to him here, get out of here. Egypt. Guess what Antiochus IV said to him? He said to Gaius Popilius, I will not leave unless consulting with his own advisors. I will not leave Egypt unless I consult with his own advisors. At that point, Gaius Popilius draw his sword from his sheet and he made a circle on the ground around Epi Antiochus IV Epiphanes. He draw a circle with his sword around him and he said here, call the shot before you leave the circle. It's either you leave Egypt or you suffer an attack from Rome. Before you leave the circle, you need to make your decision. Guess what he did? He withdrew. He did not face Rome. He withdrew from Egypt. Antiochus IV withdrew. So Gaius Popilius Lianus made a circle around Antiochus IV Epiphanes. And he said, no, no, you're not going to your advisor. Before you leave that circle, you have two choices to make. Get out of here or you face Rome. He withdrew. Once again, when things turn sour and go bad, where do you vent your anger? Israel. Capital D, the persecution of the Jews. We'll finish with this. Capital D, the persecution of the Jews. Let's take at least the first part because it's in two parts from 1130b to 35. So let me read for you chapter 11, verse 30b, the latter part of it, and verse 31, the persecution proper. Come. It starts, Therefore he will dishearten and will return and, became, and become enraged at the holy covenant and take actions. So he will come back and show regard for those who forsake the holy covenant. Forces from him will arise, desecrate the sanctuary fortress, and do away with the regular sacrifice. And they will set up the abomination of desolation, circle, abomination of desolation. In the first part, on your outline, beloved, parenthetical number one here, the persecution, from verses 30b to 31, that's the description of the persecution proper. He was grieved because of what happened in the circle. And he will vent his anger on the Jews once again. Once again on his way to Egypt, to Syria, you pass through the land of Israel. That's what I've shown you a few minutes ago. And here we have very rigid what we call anti-Semitism. The Holy Covenant of verse 30. is the Jewish theocracy under the high priest. And all of this anger, it's against the Jews. He's gonna take action or pleasure, and he will carry out that he is him, again here, Antiochus IV Epiphanes, and he will carry out this program against the Jewish people. He will go to Israel more than once. And he will show regard for those forsaking. This is complicated. Let's take it here. Therefore, he will be disheartened and will return and become enraged at the Holy Covenant and take action. So he will come back and show regard. Circle show regard for those who forsake the Holy Covenant. Circle that. I will explain to you who they are. 
they are what we call apostate Jews. Apostate Jews, Jews that forsook their God. That's what we call the Hellenizer. Can you write that down? The Hellenizer. The Hellenizers. Those who believe in everything Greek. Hellenize. The Hellenistic kingdom. The Greek kingdom. We call them the Hellenizers. Those who favor Greek culture. Books. Practices. Name it. Everything that is Greek. They are Jews that forsook the law and embraced very tightly Jewish, not Jewish culture, but Greek culture. Okay? So that's why here in verse 30 we show regard to them because you will like that kind of Jews that forsook the law and is going to basically embrace them for help. They came actually these Hellenizers, they came to the support of Antiochus IV against their own people. The Jews coming against the Jews. They ally with him to come against their fellow Jews. We call them the Hellenizers. A little bit like the Hellenizers that you find in the book of Galatians, although these guys at that time were most likely believers. And then in verse 31, you have the famous abomination of desolation. The abomination of desolation. Because Antiochus IV, Epiphanes, had the help of the apostate Jews. And guess what they did? The abomination of desolation. On the Sabbath day, he offered a pig. On the Jewish altar. Who did? Antiochus IV. He offered a swine, a pig, on the Jewish altar, a non kosher animal, and the worst of them all, if you want to put it that way. This is recorded right here in 1 Maccabees 147. And actually, this one I'll do for you. 1 Maccabees chapter 1, verse 47. I'm going to give you the quote of the book here. It says, or a very short verse in 1 Maccabees, chapter 1, to sacrifice swine and unclean animals. Okay? It's in the context of the, Macca of the Maccabees. Okay? To sacrifice swines and unclean animals. But was that in the temple? Yeah, absolutely. Yes, it's in Israel. It's in the temple. Yes. He forcefully stopped the sacrificial system. He stopped the sacrificial system of the real Jews. And he erected, listen to that closely, YouTube as well, people from YouTube. He erected an image of Zeus, Z-E-U-S, Zeus Olympus, which is the Greek name for the Roman Jupiter. He erected that image. That's exactly why Antiochus IV Epiphanes is a type of the Antichrist. That's why, I don't know if you are with me. I don't know if you, if you sympathize a little bit with me, not to attract the, 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 the pity or whatnot. It's difficult to teach these things. Very historical, where is he going with all this? But we're going to study Revelation. And th 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 some people, they don't even believe on the Antichrist and so on. But history is showing us that people that are type of the Antichrist came on the scene. And one that is closer to us is Adolf Hitler. Adolf Hitler was not the Antichrist, not even close, but he was a type of. Antiochus IV Epiphanes in the year 171 BC 170, 169, 168 was also a type of the Antichrist. And that's why we deeply go into the scriptures within that ministry to understand the value of these books. Because these things of Daniel were fulfilled to the details. But the part of, ch of point five, which we will be coming in two weeks, was never fulfilled by Antiochus IV Epiphanes. It will only be fulfilled by the coming 
of the Antichrist. I'm going to leave you with that point right now. So why is he doing that to receive donation? No. No. Just because of the heart of the excitement that too many Christians have lost slowly to get excited about the end times in the context. Despite the COVID virus, I don't know the number of death in Canada right now. I'll find out tonight. Don't ask yourself if the Great Tribulation did begin. The Great Tribulation did not begin. It's not the beginning of it. We need more stuff to happen before the start of the Great Tribulation. So don't get carried away and that's the end time. Yes, we're going towards the end time. But the Great Tribulation did not begin. First of all, you and I are here on this planet. And the rapture will occur before the Great Tribulation. We cannot exegete the Bible with newspaper and CTV news. The Bible has to be verified by correlating passage that we find in the Bible in order to be solid, unshakable, unshakable in our faith. And right now, the government, I'm going to have to stop right now, have managed to instill in all of us a great amount of fears that needs to be conquered. Where? By going to the gym, you cannot go to the gym, it's closed. But the gym of the faith is open. Get carried away a little bit, you too. So you can pause right now and you can push the heat also if you want. <laughs> uh, we rely on your support in these difficult times. Support is important. Thank you in advance. I'm going to stop right here, just for the sake of not to be too long in our meetings to respect the fatigue and so on. And in two weeks' time, because we have, we have no classes next week, because respecting the long weekend. Uh, anyway, I'm wondering why I do that, because you have nowhere to go. So, but I will do it, respecting the long weekend. And then we come back in two weeks, and we finish that tedious part. Not long, 20 minutes, everything. And then we get into the Antichrist and the end of the book of Daniel, which you don't want to miss, chapter 12 and so on, the 100, uh, 1,335 days and so on. Don't miss that kind of stuff. Yes, <clears throat> Derek, would you close? Thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you for the teachings that uh, we are able to still have in this country, the freedom to worship. And, uh, and we pray for those who cannot be here or are just being cautious of, of uh, being out and that uh, the, this virus will have an end result and, and it will. And, and you, God, you are in control. You know all, all things. And, uh, and you tell us not to fear. Fear not. These must things must happen. And uh, thank you for uh, today again and uh, for people to be safe on their way back home and um, through the week. Amen. Thank you, Derek.